Hey there, it's been a while. So I'm back with a video going through all my old sketchbooks from education level two, three, and four. Um, so that's GCSE, A level, level, even though I didn't do A levels, but I'll get onto that later, and um, first year of uni. Um, so the first sketchbook that I'm flipping through is my personal sketchbook from GCSE level. I can't show you my actual education sketchbooks because I didn't really work in sketchbooks in GCSE. It was mainly all on loose sheets. So this is mainly just a rough guide to show uh, what kind of level of drawing I was on and also what kind of ideas I was having at the time. Obviously a lot of it was not very original because a lot of it is just anime fan art. Okay, so first thing to note about studying art at GCSE is that it's they are very directed projects so you don't have a lot of creative freedom hence why I kept the personal sketchbook to jot down all of my ideas and just random little doodles that I want to do because they couldn't I didn't really have an outlet for them at school obviously as I mentioned before a lot of it was on loose sheets they ranged from A6 size paper up to a3 and A2, and I think we made a sculpture for one of our projects. It was just a load of different stuff. They get you to try a range of different stuff, but it's up to you to kind of push that boundaries and see, go the extra mile, which I like doing. Again, in school, usually classes are like 30 plus students, or at least they were in my school, so you don't have much one-on-one -on -one time with the teacher, so it's good to be, um, independent when you work because you're not really going to get much help um, even though it's like a time when you need it most which is kind of annoying also there's a big focus on grades because teachers are under pressure to get you to your predicted grade so that they don't look bad so I don't know there will just be more focus on the students that are lagging behind but I guess that's true in any class I don't know, it's just good to keep that in mind. It is good for teaching you how to hit all of the marks so that you do better when you get um, assessed in different levels as well. So that's quite useful because you learn what they're looking for so you can kind of hit all the points that they want and then also do your own thing on top of that and like give it your own twist. Which is, I like, I, I quite like that. I like making boring stuff fun. Otherwise, how would anyone get through life? So yeah, I... I'm very grateful that I studied uh, art at GCSE because it led me on the path that I am now. Um, I ended up getting an A star when my predicted grade was a B. I don't know if that interests anyone. But as you can see, these drawings obviously aren't brilliant. So you don't need to be great to get by on GCSE. It's mainly about the ideas. But again, that's true with most art courses, although execution does get more important as you go on. So this next sketchbook was my first second year sketchbook in my art course that I did at college. So this was A level, level three stuff. I did an extended diploma at Leeds College of Art, which was what it was called back then, before it became uni. So in college, they really encourage you to keep sketchbooks on everything. So you just put everything in the sketchbook and that's how it gets assessed. So it's just easier for them. And then you also submit any bigger pieces that you do separately. So all of the writing and everything goes into this sketchbook. There's a lot more analysis that needs to be done. There's a lot more artist research that has to be done than at GCSE. It's not all about making stuff for the sake of it you have to do your research and then make stuff for a purpose that has a meaning so they can see a project develop from start to finish basically so you have to kind of take them on a journey through all of your ideas it's like showing you're working in a maths exam like you get points for working out as well as the actual answer this course was a lot more independent by design and not by chance not just because there are so many people in the class although classes are still quite big but they do schedule in one-on-one -on -one time with the tutor with every single student 
so if you do have any questions you can just note them down and then ask them then and it's I think it's a lot more efficient than kind of everyone rushing up to the tutor at the beginning of the session in GCSE and then them not being able to get around everyone. College also encourages you to try a lot of different things so you can do what you like doing so whether that be painting, drawing, digital, traditional, whatever you want. For me I just like drawing traditionally at the time but they really encourage you to try different things so we were, we did a photography course induction where we learned how to develop photos traditionally through a, through a film camera. Um, we had to go into a dark room, we had to test out different exposures. It was great, very interesting, and I learned a lot from it. As well as photography inductions, they give you inductions into everything so that you can find out what you like and kind of use that to develop yourself and your practice. So we had animation inductions, photography inductions, we had Photoshop, Illustrator, all the um, Adobe, all the Adobe software inductions, all the basic ones. Basically, so we had more tools in our kit to do what we wanted to do. So yeah, it was really good. I learned a lot just about like technical stuff and also about what I liked and what I didn't like and what I was good at. There's also a lot more roughs that I submitted in college than I did at GCSE. GCSE was mainly um, you just submit finished pieces of work and then they try and connect the dots between them and then give you a mark based on that. But in college, it's like I say, they want to see a project through from start to finish. And for that to happen, they have to see all of your initial thumbnail sketches. If the next step can link it back to those initial drawings, then they can see that you've learn something from that step in the project, if that makes sense. So uh, I have two sketchbooks for examples of my college work. The second one is a continuation of one of the projects I did in the first one. If you remember, I did a typography project on Hickory Dickory Dock, and our next brief was a self-directed brief, which is where you basically write the brief and then respond to it. So I chose Hickory Dickory Dock, and I continued to explore the theme of time in my self-directed project. So I got to research a lot more artists that were just appealing to me and my developing style at the time. As I mentioned before, there's a lot more writing and a lot more research, and they really like it when you respond to the research on the page. So as you can see, there's a few times when I've just done some sketches of examples of that artists work just so the just so the tutors can see that I am um, taking on board what I've researched and applying it to my own project. I really enjoyed this project. This was one of the first ones that was truly self-directed and we got to write it for ourselves and it was just really fun to do and I feel like I like the final outcomes that I have and I got to put them in my portfolio for uni if you've seen my video on that. I think it's just autumn and spring that are in there. But they were really fun to do. So, my last, my final little sketchbook is this tiny little sketchbook from first year of uni where I studied animation. Um, obviously being animation, everything was put together digitally, so most of my things ex exist on a screen. So um, I'm showing all the relevant little animations that I did in first year above so you can see what these little crappy thumbnails led up to. But obviously you can see the big difference, the main difference between this sketchbook and my college sketchbooks were just, this is basically just for me. Although I did submit it in the end I think, or I just took pictures uh, of the relevant pages and submitted that digitally. But yeah, this is just like w working out where things need to go for me. Again, classes are around the same size, but you do have more tutors, so I think you get more one-on-one -on -one time with the tutors, which is quite useful, especially for me when I was studying something completely new and I had a lot of technical questions about, so that's good. Um, there's a lot more input from your peers on this course as well. Maybe that's just because I'm more sociable this time, 
but I have found that talking to people and getting their opinion on your work does really help because it's just like how do other people see your work because you may have been looking at it for too long you know grades aren't as important in uni I've found um, our tutors tell us all well, our tutors tell us all the time I'm nothing meant to but they say that employers will look at your portfolio and not grades so the focus very much on this course is to make good work and work that you can be proud of rather than catering yourself towards the people that are going to mark your work although there is a way to do both um projects are a lot longer on this course i think that's again mainly due to the fact that it's animation based projects are longer so you do have to be interested in the subject and the topic in order to really put out your best work and stay interested towards the end otherwise you're just gonna get bored and burn out and not gonna give it your all and then you're gonna end up with a bad portfolio and a bad grade which nobody wants um, if anyone has any questions for any specific thing on any specific course that they want to ask me then go ahead i'll try to respond um, I'm sorry if I don't have all the answers, but I'll try my best. But yeah. Art is fun, <laughs> is what I've learned in this video. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching. Um, I hope to see you again in the next one. Okay, bye!